receiver. He does have an act for buying some time, and he can throw the ball very accurately. Let's go down to the field right now, and our Mark McIntosh for more to preview this game. Thank you very much, Les. You know, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Boulder, but it's also very hot. They expect it to get up maybe into the mid-80s before the game is over. That means down here on this turf, it could be close to 100 degrees. That concerns the Minnesota coaches. Before they left Minneapolis, it was very cool. They're not used to this hot weather. That might be a factor. Other things to look for defensively, the Buffs blitzed J.J. Joe of Baylor last week 19 times. Expect more blitzing today against Fleetwood of Minnesota. Like Dave said, he's very active back there, and they feel the best way to contain him is to send a lot of people at him. Offensively for the Buffs, Kent Call will start a tailback. But watch out for second string Lamont Warren. He's a freshman out of Los Angeles. He's very fast, third fastest guy on the team. Six foot, 185 pounds. He's a fairly big target, but he makes people miss him, and they want to see how he can do in the big time here today. So expect him to play a lot. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. How do you think CU is going to come off their first loss of the year against Baylor last week? I think that'll be interesting to watch. Uh, they've got a very young team, and sometimes when you lose a tough game as they did last week, young guys tend to take longer to bounce back. Had they lost 38-6, to six, I think it would be easier mentally to come back from that loss. But they lost in the last minute, and so I think it'll be interesting in the first couple of series to see how both sides of the football uh, defensively and offensively play. Uh, Bill McCartney worked very hard this week and his staff of really getting these kids ready and jacking them back up because they were down after losing to Baylor. All right, CU comes into the game 1-1. One and one. Minnesota, as we said, 1-0. and oh. And we'll be right back with the kickoff. on the field leading the charge another gorgeous day here in Boulder Colorado I think it's even nicer than last week it's mid 80s right now might get a little hotter maybe a little too hot for football we'll see the Minnesota Golden Golfers certainly aren't used to this they're used to cool weather up in Minneapolis St. Paul the series record between these two amazingly enough both schools have played more than 100 years of football, yet these two major institutions have met only once in their history. That was back in 1972, and CU won that game handily in Minnesota by a score of 38 to 6. That was also the freshman year of my partner, Dave Logan. However, he tells me he did not make the traveling squad that year. He made many of the traveling squads after that, but not for that particular game. Returning starters for both teams, you see Minnesota has the decided edge in that category. They are returning 15 of 22 starters from a team that did pretty well last year. Went 6-5 and five all together, 5-3 five and three in the Big Ten. Good for sixth place in that conference. The University of Minnesota located in Minneapolis, a whopping 42,000 students on campus there. They do play their home games indoors at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome where the Minnesota Vikings also play. Now let's take a look at our starting lineups. The Minnesota Gophers will receive the kick today at quarterback Markel Fleetwood, the junior out of Decatur, Georgia. The running backs will be James King and Mark Smith, along with Chuck Rios at flanker. Keswick Joyner and Pat Evans will be the two receivers. And on the offensive line, Keith Ballard, Scott Hendrickson, the center is Chip Brixius, Ted Harrison, the anchor on that line, and Neil Friedenberg. Starting on defense for the CU Buffaloes, the front line looks like this. Brian Diet, Joel Steed, the preseason All-American, Leonard Renfro at a right tackle. The linebackers, and it's a good bunch. Chad Brown, Greg Beekert, who had 21 tackles last week against Baylor. John Knutson, the true freshman, will be starting at one linebacker spot in place of the injured Richard Fisher. Fisher out for the season. The defensive backfield, a hard-hitting bunch for the Buffaloes. Dion Figures, Ronnie Bradford, Eric Hamilton, and the anchor of the DBs, Greg Thomas. There's a good look at CU head coach Bill McCartney in his 10th year here at Folsom Field. His record 58, 47, and 2 in National Coach of the Year back in 1989. Kicking off for CU, that man, Mitch Berger, a strong leg. It's not unusual for Berger to put that ball out of the back of the end zone. And receiving for Minnesota. We've got a trio back there. And among them, Keswick Joyner 
and Chuck Rios. Also back there is number 79. And we'll get his name for you in a minute. puts one deep into the end zone and as we told you it's not unusual Minnesota with no chance to run that ball out so the Gophers will start with it on their own 20 yard line we are underway in Boulder the CU Buffaloes trying to rebound from their first loss of the year last week to the Baylor Bears right here at home the final was 16 to 14 it snapped an 11 game winning streak for the Buffs and also a record 15 game home winning streak. The running backs behind quarterback Markel Fleetwood are Mark Smith and Chuck Rios. And the give goes to the fullback Rios. He picks up five, maybe six yards, brought down by Beaker. A couple of things that the Colorado offense must do initially in this game recognize the sets, which they did not do very well against Baylor. And this defense must, must tackle better. They had several missed tackles against the Baylor Bears, tackles that could have resulted in no gain and went for positive yards. You can't do that and be a good defense. Fleetwood to throw. Complete to Rios. And he has the first down and a little more up to the 34-yard line before Ronnie Bradford brought him down. We've talked about Markel Fleetwood. Again, he is a quarterback that likes to drop straight back, survey the field, and yet he has quickness enough to make a lot of folks miss. This is just a slip screen. The fullback into the flat. Rios draws the lineman to him, dumps the ball, and good job by Rios here, ducking back inside. The block missed on Bradford, and yet the first down by the Gophers. Antonio Carter tries to turn it around left end. Fumble. And CU has the ball. Joel Steed falls on it at the 40-yard line. Antonio Carter broke a tackle, but couldn't hold on. And the Buffs have the ball for the first time today. Well-designed play. The counter tray that you see with the Redskins a lot. Carter breaks the tackle of Chad Brown, and then his momentum just carries him straight ahead. The hit by Beekert and Hamilton. The ball comes loose, and Joel Steed just rolls over with that big left forearm and grabs it. Colorado defensively causes the turnover on the first possession of the Gophers. Joel Steed, all big eight, fell on that fumble. Darian Hagan, a quarterback with a sprained thumb for the Buffaloes. He'll come right out throwing deep, wide open, touchdown Buffs, Rico Smith. from Grand Taft and the Baylor Bears from last week. If so, they learned that when you defense an option team, you've got to commit your free safety. Watch number one, the free safety of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. As he commits to the play action fake, and Rico Smith is to the post well behind everybody. Similar to the play of 74 yards for Baylor last week. Jim Harper, the extra point is good, and Dave, I don't know anybody will be questioning the effectiveness of Darian Hagan for the rest of the day. The Buffs. Their first play from scrimmage, seven points, and that's the score, seven up. Buy a new Arctic cat now and get $300 in extras from participating dealers. There you see the score, seven to nothing, Colorado. Only took one play, Joel Steed recovers the Minnesota fumble in the very first play. Darian Hagan, sprained thumb and all, found Rico Smith in the end zone, a 40-yard touchdown pass. So once again, Mitch Berger will be kicking off. And once again, back to receive for the Gophers, Antonio Carter, Chuck Rios, and Keswick Joyner. And once again, Berger puts it far out of the end zone. Forty yards in the first play from scrimmage. You see a great block there by James Hill as he allows Hagen to buy some time. 
And Andre Thaddeus, the free safety, is nowhere to be found. Free safeties against option teams have to come up and get very involved in run support. And a nice post move by Rico Smith to a wide open area. One running back lined up behind Fleetwood. That's Antonio Carter. And he gets the call. Up the middle, pushes the pile up about five yards. John Knutson, the freshman, makes the tackle from Great Falls, Montana, Knutson. Antonio Carter, number 39, had a fair week last week in a win over San Jose State. He gained 66 yards rushing. Four yards a carry. Last week, the Gophers did beat San Jose State 26 to 20, despite giving up 450 yards in offense. Minnesota did it by scoring the final 23 points of the game. This is the fullback Rios gets nowhere because Marcellus Elder wrapped around his ankles. And you can see the strategy early of John Gutenkust of Minnesota. He wants to come out and try to get something going running the football. Last week against San Jose State, the Gophers averaged three yards per carry. That's not going to be good enough, certainly, in a lot of games, and especially here against a good run defense. So you want to run the ball a little bit. Certainly Fleetwood is capable of throwing it, but you have to have balance. Third and five for Minnesota. Fleetwood in the flat. And Rios gets first down yardage. Chris Hudson brought him down. What makes this play, watch the velocity in the ball from Fleetwood to Rios. Bam, that ball's there in a hurry. You can see Hamilton trying to fight off the block before Hudson makes the tackle. But that wasn't a lob swing pass. That thing had some gas to it. And he gave Rios some time to do something with the ball after he caught it. First down for Minnesota from their own 30-yard line. Antonio Carter once again. One yard. Joel Steen and John Knutson the stop. The counter tray, you'll see both offside linemen come and pull. Carter gets in behind them. And a good job from the weak side as Joel Steed able to stand up the center, hold his ground. Second and nine for the Gophers. The Gophers on probation this year. One of only two Division I schools to be on probation along with Oklahoma State. Fleetwood is complete to his tight end, Pat Evans, and he's across midfield down to the Buffs' 47-yard line. We told you earlier that obviously Bill McCartney was aware of the success Baylor had with that post pass. This is the same kind of play Baylor ran last week. You fake the counter, here comes the tight end, the drag pattern, he's all by himself. Both inside linebackers got caught up too close playing that run and there's a big void between their drop and where you'll find the free safety. Minnesota does like to spread it around on offense. Six players had at least two catches last week. This is Carter with a hole up the middle. Inside the Buffs 40, down to the 39. Chad Brown the tackle. Pretty good job initially in the second drive by the Minnesota offensive line. You see a lot of black jerseys on the ground. Beaker gets cut there. The cutback by Hunter. Hendrickson, Ballard, Harrison. Doing a nice job getting a good push and allowing that back to choose the correct hole. Second and two at the Buffs 39 yard line. Full house backfield. This is the fullback, Rios, and he gets it inside the 30. Dion figures finally brings him down. Minnesota blowing some holes in the Buffs defensive line right now. When you get a nice mixture of run and pass, they've been able to do that in the second series. They have big, strong backs. This is a typical Big Ten team. They don't have great team speed, and yet they're strong up front, and backs will run through arm tackles. Minnesota with two receivers spread out wide left. But they give it to Carter, who has some room on the right side. A nice tackle 
by Dion figures to save a possible six points right there. But Carter did get inside the Buffs 25 down to the 23. They do a lot of substituting on offense. They use a lot of players, Dave. Well, they, they have a variety of sets. You'll see the one back set, two back. You'll see the tight end in motion, the full back in motion. They try to keep the defense off balance, and they've been ab able to do that so far. They are not afraid to use their second and third stringers throughout the ball game. Second and four for Minnesota. Again, it's Carter, but he's tripped up quickly. Maybe a yard. Marcellus Elder did the final tripping. Start of the workhorse so far for the Gophers. From Columbus, Ohio. They grow them big up in Minnesota, but the Gophers do do a good job recruiting throughout the nation. In fact, they have quite a few players from Florida. Two players who might have wanted a change in weather. Third and five, Fleetwood, the shuttle pass to Mark Smith. Didn't fool the Buffs too much, though. Just a couple yards on the play. Chad Brown, the tackle. Shuttle pass. You see the Broncos use quite a bit. This thing took a little long to develop. Chad Brown, usually an outside linebacker, this time inside in the defensive scheme, does an excellent job of staying home, avoiding the blocker, and putting his hat right in the middle of the numbers. And Smith really couldn't get good momentum going because the pitch was a little behind him. He had to turn his body. And now Minnesota will be trying a field goal from 40 yards, and kicking it will be a freshman from New Zealand, Mike Schalberg. We'll tell you a little bit about him later. That block, that is, that kick is blocked. CU blocks the field goal attempt. It's, it looked like Greg Thomas got his hand on the ball, so Minnesota stays off the scoreboard. The Buffs still up 7-0. Colorado got a good push up front, which you have to have if you're going to make the block. You see Greg Thomas with a tremendous leap over right guard. He is way in the air, gets it with his right hand, and the Buffs keep Minnesota off the scoreboard. That leap is fine, but unless you get the good push up front, you're jumping from too far behind the line of scrimmage, and usually you can't get it. Darian Hagan at quarterback, Kent Call, and James Hill, the running backs. And Hagan keeps it. Runs into his own man. Gets a couple yards before Gary Isaacson brings him down. Let's take a look at the CU starting offense. Hagan at quarterback. James Hill fullback. Mark Henry will be at wingback. And Kent Call the tailback. They're leading rusher so far this year. Rico Smith already with a touchdown to his credit today, along with starting tight end Sean Embry, replacing Sean Brown in the lineup. The offensive line is Anderson, the freshman Moore, Lewenberg, Dolan Jackson, and Jim Hansen. Hagan throws the intended receiver, Charles Johnson, but it went right through Johnson's hands. Thrown a little too hard. Here's the Minnesota defense. Up front, you've got Ben Williams, Dennis Capella, Gary Isaacson, and Anthony Bryant in the 4-3. Three. The three linebackers are Joel Stats, Andre Davis, and Russ Heath from Aurora, Colorado. The defensive backs, Drenone Mays, Derek Fisher, Sean Lumpkin, a Jim Thorpe candidate, and Andre Thaddeus. Third and eight for the Buffs. From their own 23. That pass is complete. And up to the 40-yard line. Sean Embry, the tight end. He's in the starting lineup for his blocking, but CU comes out throwing to him. Excellent pass protection from Darian Hagan. Minnesota rushes only four. And the linebackers got very deep drops. You can see Embry all by himself and able to pick up the first down. Embry, a graduate of Cherry Creek High School. First and 10 for the Buffs from their 40. Hagan, nowhere to go, pitches the call, and he doesn't get very far either. He's brought down for an eight-yard loss. Andre Davis and Russ Heath, the kid from Mullen High School, bring him down. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Thanks, guys. Nobody on the CU side surprised that they blocked that Minnesota field goal. I was over there on their sideline, and right before the kick, they said, we're going to block this. They noticed... In the films during the week, that Chalberg kicks a low ball, so they're working, as Dave was saying, to get a, a good push through the middle to get Greg Thomas up in the air to block, and they did just that. 
Bucks have the ball on their own 33. It's second and 12. Hagan again going deep. Wide open is Mark Henry. A nice diving catch inside the Minnesota 40-yard line at about the 37. Well, this is just a fade route against too deep coverage. You're normally not going to be able to get this throw, but Derek Fisher does not engage Mark Henry, make him change his route, and this is a tremendous throw. Fisher did not get a bump on Henry, who circled outside, kept on going down the sideline, and a great catch by Mark Henry. First down, we give to James Hill. Bounces his way down to the 31, calling a gain of six. Andre Thad is the stop. Against this Minnesota defense, it's going to be hit and miss. You'll make some big plays, but you have to exercise patience. Minnesota defensively utilizing the same concept of the Steelers back in the 70s, the 4-3 tilt. You'll see that defensive tackle tilted to one side or the other of the offensive center. He tries to tie up two men and allow that middle linebacker to make a lot of plays. Second and three. Hagan wide open over the middle mark. Henry, touchdown. This is almost too easy. Well, what you've seen here in the first two series, Minnesota has completely sold out to stop the run. And Colorado has done a good job game plan wise of realizing just that. Mark Henry is in the slot, top of your screen. He will run straight down the field with nobody paying any attention to him. Straight down the hash and Henry with a 30 yard touchdown catch, the second of the day from Darian Hagan in terms of touchdown throws. Harper's extra point is in. He's got it. And with 5.39 to go in just the first quarter, the Buffs 14, the Minnesota Gophers zip. That's Tom Gadd, the Minnesota defensive coordinator, having a little heart-to-heart -heart with his Golden Gopher crew. They have given up two big plays here in the first quarter, and they've allowed Colorado to do exactly what they didn't want them to regain their confidence, the confidence that had probably been lost last week against Baylor. With the two touchdown passes today, Darian Hagan moves into second on the all-time CU list for career touchdown passes thrown. He moves ahead of Gail Wider, and he is still behind Steve Hogan. And for the third time today, Mitch Berger kicks the ball right through the end zone. Take a look at the touchdown throw. And again, the free safety in the middle of your screen, Andre Thaddeus, watch his head. He is playing Darian Hagan to the corner. By the time he realizes, uh-oh, Mark Henry runs right past him. And that's, again, a team that is trying to stop the run and paying no attention to the passing game. Well, you can, you can hardly blame Minnesota for trying to stop the run when you consider all week long they've heard about Hagan's sprained thumb. And also last week, the Buffs did not throw the ball well against Baylor. A 14 and nothing CU lead. This is Antonio Carter for Minnesota. A gain of four yards. Chad Brown the tackle. And this is the drive that obviously very important to Minnesota because they're in danger of falling out of this football game if they don't move down the field and put some sort of points on the board. Last time, pretty good drive. They had the field goal block. You want to generate some confidence of your own. You're already down two scores. If you're wondering, the odds makers have made CU a 16-point favorite in this game, and right now the odds makers look pretty smart. Second and seven for the Gophers. Fleetwood to throw. Over the middle, incomplete. The intended receiver, Paul Hopewell, overthrown a bit. Markel Fleetwood, six foot one, 195 pound junior, out of Georgia. He was their offensive MVP last year for 1,200 yards. You might say, what's a kid from Georgia doing going to Minnesota to play football? Nobody recruited him as a quarterback except John Goodenkutz. He said, hey, you come here, you'll play quarterback, and that's where Fleetwood went. I want to know what's a kid from Georgia doing throwing the ball so well. Down there, it's run, run, run. Third and seven. Fleetwood, with pressure, gets the ball off complete to Steve Cambrese. No, he drops the ball. In his hands and right out. Incomplete. Ronnie Bradford gave him a shot to the back. And that, as much as anything, caused Cam Brees to drop it. We talked about Fleetwood and his ability to scramble and buy some time. This is a tough throw. 
a little behind the tight end, and Bradford really jolts him. That's a tough catch, and one that I can guarantee you Steve Cambrice will remember. Minnesota punting for the first time today. Dean Kaufman doing duty, and Darian Hagan will try to return the line drive from his own 28 and brought down at his own 33. A return of five yards for Hagan, a total punt of 50 yards. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC and the National Broadcasting Company as intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this telecast without the expressed written consent of KCNC is prohibited. The Buffs with the ball, their own 33-yard line. Darian Hagan calls a timeout. He saw something he didn't like. The first timeout taken by the Buffs all day. Each team gets three timeouts per half. Remember the Buffs taking an opportunity to take a swig of water. It's very hot on the field. There's a look at the freshman, John Knutson, in the starting lineup for the first time. He had to come in halfway through last week's game when Richard Fisher went down with a season-ending injury. And another sellout crowd here watching the Buffs. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh right now. Thank you, Lance. It looks like the Minnesota Gophers have finally made some adjustments defensively. Before this series, I was over by the CU bench, and Darren Hagan turned to me and said, they're not making any adjustments on the option. They weren't checking the wide receivers at the line of scrimmage, and so the Buffs were just burning them deep all day long. It looked like they were committing almost all 11 guys to the run. It looks like now Minnesota has made some adjustments over there defensively to try to shut down that passing game, and I think that's what Hagan saw. They they made those adjustments, and so CU talked it over to see what they could do. Thanks, Mark. It's a little surprising, Dave, to hear that, that Minnesota is struggling defensively because their head coach, John Gutenkunst, puts major emphasis on defense. He was their defensive coordinator before taking over the head job. Well, Hagan obviously off to a great start. As we mentioned, he became the uh, Buffs' all-time total offensive leader last week. He surpassed Bobby Anderson, who was a pretty darn good football player. But Hagan, with 106 yards of passing, no yards on the ground yet. All yardage so far through the air for CU. First and ten for the Buffs. Hagan on the reverse. Tariko Smith, a lot of room. If he can get to the sideline, he can go all the way. One man to beat. And Sean Lumpkin pushes him out of bounds. But the referee is calling Smith out of bounds back at the Minnesota 42-yard line. Again, Minnesota really over-pursuing, trying to play that option. Rico Smith comes around. Now, why he ran out of bounds may be the $64,000 question. He really didn't have to, lost his momentum a little bit and stepped out of bounds before Lumpkin could get to him. A well-designed play, and you'll see Rico Smith here all by himself. Anderson out in front, stepped out of bounds right there and the official on top of it. Flag on the field. Rico Smith with a 26-yard gain. He lost about 20 yards by stepping out of bounds. Back at the 42, then again, we saw in the replay there, Andre Thaddeus was pursuing him from a pretty good angle, and Smith tried to avoid him. Kendall Bussey now in the ballgame for CU at fullback, replacing James Hill. Illegal motion on the offense, declined, second down. Well, you just heard Terry Turlington, the referee, tell you what the Buffs did wrong there. It's a split crew, half from the Big 8, half from the Big 10. That would only be fair. The penalty goes against CU. It'll be second and 10 for the Buffs, still at the Minnesota 42. Hagan, the quick toss to Rico Smith inside the 40. Down to about the 37. Mark McIntosh has more from the field. Mark? Yeah, Kendall Bussey's in the ball game for James Hill. James is over here on the sidelines being looked at. It looks like he has injured his right ankle. Well, actually, he's hobbling, yeah, on the right ankle over there. And now Wayne Gersoff and Dave Burton, the team trainer, are taking a look at James Hill. We'll get over there and, and try to see what's wrong with the Buffs fullback. Thanks, Mark. And they would miss James Hill. He's got 94 yards rushing on the year so far. Third and six for the Buffs. That's Charles Johnson in motion. Hagan on the option. He will run it. 
steps inside the 35 down to the 33. He'll be about a yard short of the first down, however. I think Darian Hagan made up his mind he was going to run this football almost from when he took it from Jay Lewenberg. Just a little short of first down, and although the crowd won't like this move, I think it's a good move. Get your field goal team on the field and give Jim Harper and your offensive line some confidence because obviously after last week, they're probably short in that category. This will be a 50-yard field goal attempt from Jim Harper, and he's capable. He's got a long of 54 in his Bucks career. It's up. Is it accurate enough? Yes, a 50-yard field goal for Jim Harper. And with 3.23 to go in the first quarter, the CU Buffaloes lead the Minnesota Gophers 17 to nothing. Well, you see Bill McCartney all the way out on the field and high five Jim Harper. It's important when you've got a kicker, you want him to be a confident player. And of course, last week and even the last few games, the kicking game has had its difficulties, but Harper got all of that one. Bucks with a wealth of kickers again this year. Last year it was Harper and Tom Ruin, the punter. This year it's Harper still on field goals, and now Mitch Berger punting and kicking off, both with very strong legs. Tomorrow on Channel 4 and NBC, the San Diego Chargers come into Mile High Stadium to face the Denver Broncos. We'll have live coverage of all the action, plus highlights, and I'll be in the locker room for interviews immediately following on News 4 at 5. It all starts tomorrow with Broncos Beat Sunday at 1 p.m., and NFL Live with Bob Costas at 1.30, followed by the Broncos and the Chargers at 2 o'clock. It's all right here on Channel 4, the home of the Denver Broncos and the CU Buffaloes and high school football, high school basketball, just about everything else you can name when it comes to sports, the Boulder Boulder, as long as we're here. It's a big house, isn't it? It is a big house. Yeah. Mitch Berger kicking off for the Buffs. A trio back to receive for Minnesota. Oh, Berger is amazing today. This is the fourth time he's kicked off and the fourth time he has put it out of the end zone. Do you get points for that, Dave? It went right through the uprights. Well, they ought to give him something. She even saw it go over her head. Well, how about a pat on the back? You can't pay the college kids. Although Oklahoma would probably beg to differ on that. Seventeen to nothing. See you. I know I'm going to hear from Sooner fans on that one. <laughs> Three twenty-three to go in the first quarter. They, they've already gone to the mailbox. This is Mark Smith turning the corner. Nice little gain of about eight yards. Deion Figures and Greg Thomas there to stop him. Greg Bakert also there. Then again, Greg Bakert is everywhere. He led the Big Eight in tackles last year, 105 solo tackles, and that was good for second best in the country. He has what we call a nose for the ball. Second and two for Minnesota. Again, Mark Smith, and again with some room. Up across the 35 to the 36, Chad Brown the tackle, and Mark McIntosh with more from the field. All right, Les, an update on James Hill. Looks like he's twisted his right ankle. Nothing real serious, but we don't know whether or not he'll return to the ball game with the Buffs ahead 17-0, and a freshman behind him. It might be a good time to get a long look at Kendall Bussey. So right now it's up in the air whether or not James Hill will be back. The depth chart for the Buffs at fullback looks like this. James Hill, Kendall Bussey, and then David Arterberry. The young man from Mullen High School. But right now, Minnesota has the ball. First down, Fleetwood overthrows his receiver. It was intended for Lewis Garrison. But right now, Minnesota, I think, has to be pleased with the way they've been able to move the football. Nice combination of short passes and runs Fleetwood four of seven for 37 yards but they've mixed up their offense enough that they've kept that CU defense on their heels these Gophers have a tough schedule this year non-conference they play CU and Pitt, the top 20 team 
And then when they go to the Big Ten schedule, well, all together, they play eight teams this year that played in bowl games last year. Second and ten. And a good rush from Chad Brown, complete to Mark Smith. Brought down at the 49-yard line by Eric Hamilton. And it's another first down for the Gophers. Mark Smith, a good-looking freshman out of New Orleans. There's a screen pass. You'll see Greg Beaker at number 19. He will smell this thing out, but he gets blocked just as Smith catches the football. There goes Beaker, and Mark Smith, not overly nimble, but a very tough kid, runs over Eric Hamilton and picks up 14 yards. Another golden goal for first down. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter. The Buffs up 17 to nothing. Antonio Carter. Across midfield, a gain of six down to the Buffs 45-yard line. Eric Hamilton brings him down. Boy, Paul Folkwell put a crunching crackback block that time on Chad Brown. Second and four for Minnesota. It's Carter again. Down to the 36. Call it a gain of nine and another first down. Dion figures the tackle. Well, oh, there's that note on the Gopher schedule I told you about. Eight teams this year. Played in bowl games last year. And that includes San Jose State from last year. San Jose State was ranked 20th in the nation at the end of the year. Minnesota beat them last week. First and 10 from the Buffs, 37. Fleetwood throws it away. Probably a smart move. His intended receiver was the running back, Chuck Rios, and there was a host of Buffs surrounding Rios. Good pass rush up front that time. It was going to be a screen pass. Fleetwood realizes that Rios did not get out to the flat. Just let that thing go. That could have been intentional grounding. Bill McCartney wanted that call, did not get it. So it's second and ten for Minnesota. This is Rios. Down to the 30. A gain of seven, but short of the first down. Give credit to the Minnesota offensive line and these backs. They are running through arm tackles. And you see Bruner spins around and just gets the left hand on him. Diet tries to corral him. Carter and Rios, two big, strong backs. Lock winding down quickly. We've got 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. It's third and four for Minnesota. Two tight ends in the game for the Gophers right now. They show run, and they do run. That's Mark Smith. John Knudsen makes the tackle, along with Leonard Renfro. And that is the end of the first quarter. The Buffs off to a fast start, leading Minnesota 17 to nothing. We'll be right back at Wilson Field. There you see it. The first quarter just ended. The CU Buffs with a 17 to nothing lead over Minnesota, and here's some first quarter stats for you. Well, Colorado's made several big plays. That's why they're ahead 17 to nothing. But Minnesota with 129 yards of total offense, the Buffs 147. They go for 79 yards on the ground, and that's something that I'm sure Bill McCartney is not pleased with. Baylor able to generate a lot of yardage with the option attack, but Minnesota not really known as a ground-oriented team, and yet they've been able to, again, keep CU defensively guessing as to what they're going to do. The total yardage fairly close. The difference, two big pass plays by the Buffs. The first one from Darian Hagan to Rico Smith. The second one from Hagan to Mark Henry, both for touchdowns. Mike Schalberg in the game for a 50-yard field goal attempt for Minnesota. It's long enough, but it is wide to the right. Schalberg with a very strong leg but not quite accurate enough. So Minnesota still not on the board and the Buffs will take over. 
Mark McIntosh with another piece of news from the field. Mark? Thank you, Les. You know, John Knutson, the Buffs freshman linebacker, made, made a nice stop to set up that field goal attempt that was wide right. And I was talking to Knutson this week at practice, and he said, you know, last week when he had to replace Rich Fisher, his teammates were fantastic. You know, a young freshman, sometimes it's tough to gain acceptance. But the minute he went on the field, he was getting a lot of encouragement from his ball players, his teammates, and it made him feel a lot more comfortable. And he did well last week with nine tackles. Back up stick. All right. Buffs with the ball, first and 10 from their own 32. They try it up the middle. Nowhere. Gary Isaacson and Andre Davis make the stop. Kendall Bussey, the carry for the Buffs. Bill McCartney said Bussey is really starting to come on and, and understand the offense much better this week. 6'3 and 225 pounds, a freshman out of Louisiana. Second and eight. Hagan on the keep. Met head on at the 37 yard line. By Ben Williams and Andre Davis. Andre Davis is supposed to make a lot of tackles in this defensive scheme. 4 3 tilt. Davis sits in the middle as the middle linebacker, and much the same as Jack Lambert did for the Steelers. They try to keep offensive guard and the center off of him and let him roam from sideline to sideline. Third and five for the Buffs. This is Kent Cole. Big hole. Gets the first down and a little more. Up across his own 45 to the 47. Dennis Capella the stop. Kent Cole celebrating the birthday today. This little counter fake. And when Kent Cole is able to play in his sophomore and junior and senior year, that will be a play that will result in a big, big game. He'll pick up his feet. He'll make that first guy miss. And thus gain more yards. First down, fumble, call. And it's fallen on by Minnesota. And that's which way the Zebras are pointing, Minnesota's way. So the Buffs' first turnover of the afternoon, Gary Isaacson recovers the fumble by call. Well, Hagan and Call had trouble with the exchange, just a lead play. And it looked like Call may have taken his eyes off it for just a second. Sometimes if that ball is placed a little too high, it's tough for the running back, but you can see that is below the number. And that's one that Kent Call may have been watching what was happening up front and not watching the football or not feeling the ball. You really don't look at the football, but you can feel it when it's placed in your midsection. First and 10 for Minnesota. Pretty good field position. Above 48 yard line. They give us to Antonio Carter, tripped up and thrown for a loss of two yards by Deion Figures. sold out this year at Folsom Field was the game November 16th against the Kansas Jayhawks. If you want tickets, call the ticket office here at Folsom Field. Second and 11. Fleetwood with a pitch straight out of bounds. Nothing worked on that play, and there's a flag on the field. Dave, I wouldn't want to be the one to have to dissect this play. Well, we'll find out what it is. Offsides against the CU defense. Colorado with a much better job here of playing the option quarterback. Remember J.J. Joe last week, the ball fake. Wolfork takes him. Rios just can't catch up to the football. The first fake up the middle to the fullback was not done very well and, and after that it was like a house of cards falling down. All five. However, the defense second down. There is a penalty against the bus. Minnesota does get some yardage out of that play. The ball on the bus 45 yard line and it is second and six for Minnesota. I formation lead or play action pass usually is what Minnesota does. Very wide, wise decision. Wolf Fork and Chad Brown there. 
The eye is a tough formation to run the option with unless you have great speed at the tailback. And Rios and Carter, both well over 200 pounds, and yet not with great speed. Minnesota's gone away a little bit from what I think they truly like to do. And that's line up the eye formation, run the lead, play action fake, or one back and throw the ball. Was that a case where they tried to disguise the option by coming out in eye formation? Sure. Gets the bus off there? Sure, absolutely. Third and four for Minnesota. Fleetwood into the flight. That's Rios. He has the first down and goes out of bounds. Marked at the 32-yard line. Minnesota has been able to move the ball on the bus. They've had a field goal block, and they fumbled the ball away. This is just a case of Julian Hayward taking the wrong angle to make the tackle. Rios is there. Hayward will come inside and then is unable to gather himself and chase Rios down. A nice job, a very subtle move by Rios, a hesitation, and that enables him to get to the corner. Minnesota takes its first time out. Fleetwood comes to the sideline, talk it over with Coach John Gutkunst. And with 11.54 to go in the first half, the Buffs still with a 17-0 lead. Early in the second quarter, you see the scores. CU leading Minnesota 17-0. John Gutekunst, the Minnesota head coach, done a good job here with a program that's been in turmoil the last few years. He's in his sixth year here, a 27, 28, and two record. Penalty flags all over the field. Did Minnesota draw the buffs offside? I think Colorado is going to be penalized here. Fleetwood looked like he was changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Offside on the defense. First down. Sometimes as a defensive lineman, you hear all these snap counts and you just can't wait. That's Joel Steed right over the center. So Minnesota on the Buffs 27 yard line with a first and five. Fleetwood looking downfield, has a man, overthrown. The intended receiver was flanker John Lewis. Greg Thomas was on the coverage there. Second and five, and So it'll be second and five for the Gophers. The furthest they've penetrated into CU territory today. On the 27 yard line. Fleetwood again downfield, this time complete. Inside the 10, knocked out of bounds by Greg Thomas. The receiver was Keswick Joyner. A nice throw, a nice catch. Well designed play. The play action fake will allow Joyner right here to escape the jam, escape the jam of Ronnie Bradford. If you're playing short side, you've got to hold that receiver up a little bit because if you don't, Greg Thomas, your safety who helps you deep, doesn't have enough time to get there. Too much room to cover. Bradford has to jam that receiver a little bit more and disrupt his his motion off the line of scrimmage. Keswick Joyner averaged 20 yards a catch last year. From the nine yard line, it's first and goal. That was the fullback Rios. Not much. Maybe one yard. Joel Steed brought him down. Minnesota offensively again last. They haven't been able to put any points on the board and yet they've been able to move the football. Here's a team that last week at home against San Jose State trailed 20 to 9 midway through the third quarter before they got things rolling. Want to make a correction that last ball carrier was Antonio Carter. And not Chuck Rios but he still didn't get any yardage on the play. Second and eight. That's Rio said he is met head on and thrown for a one yard loss by Leonard Renfro. The sophomore out of Detroit, Michigan, six foot five, 270 pounds. When you're introduced to him, 
you remember him. And here, third down and long, you can expect Colorado, third and ten, to blitz to try to put pressure on Fleetwood and make him throw the ball quicker. And usually they will come from the outside. They've got a nickel package in. The crowd trying to help out the CU defense. It's third and 10 from the 10. Fleetwood incomplete to Rios. I think Rios heard footsteps right there. The footsteps of Greg Baker. They've had success with that play, but that's a play you use when it's a zone defense. Baker is locked on Rios right from when the ball is snapped. So he's going to come to Rios no matter if Rios gets the ball or not. Number 33 will go to the flat. Beaker is locked on him all the way. You'll see him enter your picture. Had Rios caught that ball, Beaker would have had it. The field goal unit comes in from Minnesota. Mike Schalberg, number 24 with his back to you. Left side of the screen will do the kicking. This will be a 28-yard attempt. And once again, Schalberg misses. So Minnesota three times has tried field goals today. One has been blocked. One from 50 yards has been wide to the right. And this one from 28 yards also wide to the right. Well, there was a case where Schalberg just didn't follow through. And he knew it when he hit it. Well, the legendary head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, Bud Grant, says about Schalberg, he is the best young place kicker I have ever seen. High praise from a man who has seen many very good place kickers, including one of his own, Fred Cox, who is on the NFL's all-time scoring list. He's got an active leg, but that much the same as a golf swing. He just didn't follow through, left it out wide right. Strong, but not quite accurate. Flags on the field as the Buffs have the ball. From their own 20-yard line, they start with it. If a field goal is attempted and missed from inside your 20, you get the ball at your 20. On the offense. First down. However, if the field goal is attempted and missed from outside of the 20-yard line, the other team takes the ball from the line of scrimmage. So that sets the Buffs back five yards, the penalty does. It's first and 15 from their own 15. Back to the 20 and the original line of scrimmage. Andre Davis and Joel Stats, the two Minnesota linebackers, make the stop. This, I think, a play that indicates why Darian Hagan is going to stay a quarterback and not go to tailback, although I think he can play there. But Hagan is a threat even when they want to go back and throw the ball. This play looked like a designed quarterback draw. But Hagan, when he goes back to throw it, can always pull the ball down. And you want the football in the hands of your most prolific player offensively as many times as you can. That's Darian Hagan, and that's why he's playing quarterback. I want to ask you about the possibility of Hagan going back to tailback a little later in the game. Meanwhile, Hagan to throw. And it's complete. To Sean Brown. And Brown has the first down up at the 39-yard line. And this gives me a good opportunity to ask you about it. Don't you think it's too late? There's a lot of debate. Should Hagen stay a quarterback or be moved to tailback? Don't you think it's a little too late to make a senior like him into a tailback? I think he could play, but again, as I mentioned before, the reason he's there, he's so versatile, and he's got the ball in his hands more times than a tailback would. Good throw there as Brown finds the soft spot, hooks up, and Hagen right on the money. First and ten. Hagen, with a little bit of pressure, escapes it and gets the ball. Wide open is Lamont Warren. Down to the Minnesota 34-yard line. Lamont Warren, the freshman out of Inglewood, California. And this is what I mean. A senior quarterback can do these things. A young quarterback might panic. He avoids the initial rush, has a chance to run, and yet looks downfield, has the presence to look for a receiver. Lamont Warren just finds a good soft spot, makes the nice catch, and... We'll see a lot of this youngster in the next few years at running back. He's a tailback now, and Bill McCartney said he has come on the last couple of weeks. Good speed, moved up to second string just this week. He worked very well in practice and rewarded. And this is Warren running the ball down to the 30, call it a gain of four. We've got 8.30 to go in the first half. CU leading 17 to nothing.
Lamar Warren signed last year had some thoughts about not coming after he initially signed the letter of intent but was talked into it by the since departed Oliver Lucas and looks to be a true player. Second and seven. This is Warren again. Oh, he's in. This is a touchdown. 31 yards, Lamont Warren. And I tell you, the guy who makes this possible, Dolan Jackson and right guard. If you get a chance to see this, watch number 74 and right guard who will, who will pull on the counter. If we can see 74, the left side. There's the block as Dolan Jackson, all 290 pounds of him, gets out in front of Lamont Warren and that was the easiest touchdown he may ever have in four years. And Harper's extra point attempt is good. We're going to take a break right here. And CU deserves a break. With eight minutes to go in the first half, they lead Minnesota 24 to nothing. You see Lamont Warren sipping a glass of water, went over and thanked all of his offensive linemen, and rightfully so. Got a terrific block by a couple of guys, and we'll take a look at it after the kickoff. In the meantime, Mitch Berger setting the ball on the tee. He's been perfect so far. Four kickoffs, all of them beyond the end zone. No chance for a run back by Minnesota so far today. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you. And a once again sold out Folsom Field, 52,000 strong. And Mitch Berger does it again. How many times can you say it? Watching his kickoffs, try to try to decide which way the wind is blowing. Take a look at the uh, Lamont Warren touchdown run. The right guard, Dolan Jackson, number 74, will pull, along with Craig Anderson, the right tackle. Jackson gets a smashing block in the corner, Derek Fisher, and Lamont Warren is home free. Derek Fisher, number 13, you'll have a look at what he sees. Here comes Dolan Jackson and Craig Anderson. Bam! About 700 pounds worth in front of Lamont Warren. That's Mark Smith pushed back to the line of scrimmage. Eric Hamilton. That's called escorting one back. This is the hardest hitting set of defensive backs on a college team I've ever seen. The CU Bucks. Dion figures Eric Hamilton, Greg Thomas, Ronnie Bradford. The last scoring drive for the Buffs. Five plays, 80 yards, culminating in a 31-yard touchdown run by Lamont Warren. Second and nine for Minnesota. Fleetwood, a lot of time. Throws the ball out of bounds. He heard Ronnie Wolfort coming right behind him. You know, it's amazing how differently your team plays when you're down 24 points in the road and how the opposition plays after the 24 points ahead. Fleetwood looks for the tight end initially on the drag he's covered tries to find somebody in the sideline but unfortunately the receiver number 83 Steve Kent Brees was standing out of bounds had a knee down out of bounds when he caught the ball third and nine Fleetwood a strong throw up the middle but a couple yards away from the intended receiver, Omar Douglas, and Minnesota in another punting situation. Speaking of punting, did you see the statistic where Nebraska, in its first two games, has not had to punt the ball? Mike Stickey, their punter, has not been on the field. That is amazing. Dean Kaufman to punt for Minnesota. Back to receive it. Darian Hagen for the boss. Gets off a low kick. He's lucky he got it off. Hagen fields it at his own 35. And returns it approximately 10 yards to his own 45. A 45-yard kick. And you need to give Dean Kaufman a lot of credit. He fumbled the snap, but still was able to get it off. And Hagen with a 10-yard return. 
Sunday night singer sports night here on Channel 4 immediately following the news at 10 o'clock as we take a look at the replay of the punt well why don't you talk about that and then I'll go back to the uh, promotion self-explanatory ball dropped once the ball hits the turf that punter is live you can take a crack at him and he was a sportsman to get the kick off I'll be real frank with you folks we're going to can the promotion until a little later here because we're back to live action Lamont Warren up the middle for a couple of yards the Buffs have a new quarterback in that is Vance Joseph the sophomore out of Marrero Louisiana you have to wonder here if there's something wrong with Darian Hagan's thumb which he sprained during the week or if Bill McCartney figures I have a 24 to nothing lead I'm going to save Darian a little bit I, I think rather than that you want to get Vance Joseph work because Hagan takes a lot of shots and if something should happen here's the answer that has to make his offense go and that youngster gets it up to the 50 yard line on the keeper a gain of four yards Andy Craddaville the tackle his brother Mickey Joseph lost his starting position at Nebraska at least temporarily Keith McCant is the Husker starting quarterback Mickey lost his job at Nebraska because he didn't throw the ball very well but his brother does throw it nicely third and five he's going to throw it right here nice touch pass to Lamont Warren you're getting a good look at the future here folks across midfield down to the Minnesota 44 yard line that's a first down for the Bucks. Well, Bill McCarty said this week that this was a good time to be getting his buffs because they were wounded coming off a loss to Baylor, and they better get them this year if they're going to get them. Lamont Warren, a freshman. Vance Joseph, a sophomore. Dolan Jackson, a freshman. They've got a lot of young talent that's only going to get better in the next few years. Vance Joseph on the option. It's maybe a yard. Andy Credible brings him down. Let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh. Mark. All right, guys, Darian Hagan is just fine. Like David mentioned, they're just giving Vance Joseph a little work. One other injury to report, you might notice that right tackle is Derek West. Jim Hansen has missed the last two series for the Buffs. He was stung by a bee earlier in the ballgame. He is allergic to bee stings. I don't know if Hansen will be back. Allergic to bee stings. That's not too swell. Vance Joseph over the middle. Complete. Across the inside the 35 to Mark Henry down to the 32 yard line. Mark Henry, the walk on playing wingback, makes a nice adjustment on this throw. Vance Johnson, Vance Joseph with the play action. Ball a little bit behind him, and that can be a very difficult catch from time to time. Mark Henry's third catch on the afternoon. In all of your years playing football, did anybody ever get stung by a bee on the field and have to come out of the game? Not that I can remember. I can just tell you I didn't. Lamont Warren up the middle. Pushed back. But he'll get forward progress down to the 30-yard line, a gain of two. Gary Isaacson and Dennis Capella do the pushing back. This on the sideline. That's a somber lot right now. Down 24 to nothing, and we're still in the first half. 4-10 to go. And there's a happier lot, the CU cheerleaders. Well, now we have a bee flying around the booth. Yeah, you may have heard your last comment. It's a guy in the green tie, Mr. B. <laughs> Second and eight for the bus. Joseph with a nice pass. Complete to Sean Embry. Down to the 21 yard line. His second catch of the afternoon. And a first down. We talked about getting Vance Joseph some playing time. This is a great play as Joseph feels the rush. Ben Williams, the defensive end, comes untouched, and yet he's got enough presence to get the ball in the air, knowing Embry is going to be by himself. And another CU first down. That's why he has to play now, so he can make those reads and make the right decisions for later. To give to Warren. Down to the 19-yard line. 3.30 to go, first half. Gary Isaacs in the tackle again. I think you're seeing Colorado come out and really throw the ball more effectively for a couple of reasons. Obviously, Minnesota's playing the run. But by doing this, they take an immense amount of pressure off their offensive line 
in the ensuing weeks against Stanford and then back home against Missouri and of course the rest of the Big 8 Conference. If they can throw the ball a little bit, then other defenses can't stack up against that inexperienced offensive line. Second and eight. This is James Hill back in the ball game. He looks good and he's in the end zone. Touchdown Hill. Well, so much for a bum ankle. We told you last week that James Hill is a tailback in a fullback's body. He thinks like a tailback. There he breaks one tackle, steps inside, breaks another tackle, gets under the cut by Sean Embry. There is a flag on the play, however, but a nice bit of running by James Hill. And they're going to pick the flag up. Evidently, there will be no penalty. And that's what you hear from the crowd. Disregard the flag. Touchdown. I always like to know, although the official will never say, disregard the flag, what do you mean? Did you see something that you then thought should have been a flag, but no, I'll pick? I mean, what do you mean disregard the flag? Dave, it just slipped out of his pocket. Yeah. Jim Harper, the extra point is good. The Buffs with a 31 to nothing lead. We have 2.57 to go in the first half. Andre Davis, the middle linebacker, may be the best defensive player that Minnesota has. You'll see him the right side. He is completely free and has James Hill in the hole. Can't make the tackle. Sean Lumpkin, the all Big Ten strong safety, cannot bring James Hill down. And the Buffs on the Hill touchdown now lead it 31 to nothing. Nine plays, 55 yards, under four minutes. James Hill from 20. Well, you did say before the game started, you wouldn't be surprised if CU ripped off a number of plays of 20 or more yards, and you hit the nail right on the head. You said Minnesota likes to gamble on defense, and they are losing every gamble they're taking. Yeah, they've gambled a lot, and it just hasn't worked out for them. Mitch Berger to kick off once again. Well, this time, if Minnesota wants, a chance to return. <laughs> but instead, one yard deep. Chuck Rios decides the prudent thing to do would be to stay right there and take the ball out to the 20-yard line. The first time all day, Mitch Berger even gave Minnesota a chance to return a kickoff. He's been a busy man. The Buffs with a 31-0 lead. 2.57 to go in the first half. The Buffs have scored on every position possession today except for one. And on that one, they fumbled the ball away. Antonio Carter pushes up the middle for six yards. Three buffs riding herd on that play. Wolf Fork and Greg Baker among them. Second and four. Give him the 40. And already, just in this first half, the Buffs have achieved their highest point total of the year. Previous to this, it was 30 against Wyoming. Just a tight end drag again. That has been the most successful play against Colorado in the three games they've played so far, or the two and a half. And it's linebackers that have to make sure once that quarterback has the ball, you've got to look up that tight end because he's coming on the drag almost every time. First down for the Gophers. Fleetwood. Incomplete. Almost intercepted by Ronnie Wolfork. Well, you would never guess that Wolfork is playing the linebacker position after spending a whole high school and the start of his college career at quarterback. He does a nice job. We didn't see it, but Rios actually tried to block Wolfork initially and then drift out to the flat. Wolfork able to stay with him and almost come up with a one-handed interception. These are young outside linebackers. Chad Brown is a veteran, but he's never played outside before. Wolfork hasn't played, and they're going to have to get better as the weeks come. Wolfork recruited as a quarterback. He's come on strong. This is Antonio Carter up to the 46-yard line. Call it a gain of six.
Less than two minutes to go in the first half. This crowd awfully quiet. A reflection of what the scoreboard reads. 31 to nothing CU. Third and four. Minnesota tries to run it up the middle. They'll be short of the first down by a couple yards. And the quarterback Fleetwood wants a timeout. See, you cheerleaders have a job on their hands today. Get the crowd back into the game. All right, let's try that promo again, Dave, okay? Sunday nights are your sports night here on Channel 4. Immediately following the News 4 late edition at 10.35, it's the Bill McCartney Show featuring the coach himself along with our very own Dave Logan. They'll bring you all the highlights and analysis of today's game. Then it's Sports Extra with Gary Miller who brings you the very best of the week in sports. It all starts at 10.35 this Sunday following the News 4 late edition. Minnesota has a, an interesting decision here, fourth and about two, maybe even a yard and a half. They'd like to get some points on the board. They also would like to prevent Colorado from putting any more up. Do you go for it on your own 48, knowing that if you fail, you're probably going to get to see you good enough field position with enough time to go for it a few times. It looks like John Goodenkuth has said, hey, let's see if we can score here. We need the points. We'll take the gamble. Yeah, what do you have to lose? Minute 16 to go in the first half. Minnesota is going for it. Fourth down and two yards to make it from their own 48 yard line. He's going to run it himself with nowhere to go. And the Buffs shut down Minnesota and take over on downs. Well, Colorado changed defensively there, made an adjustment. They went out of their normal defense to the nickel package. You see Chad Brown, they've moved him inside from the outside linebacker. So it looked to be a quarterback draw, which may have worked against the regular defense. Simply had nowhere to go against the nickel package. And now the Buffs with excellent field position in a minute and 10 seconds to go in the first half. Vance Joseph still a quarterback for CU, giving Darian Hagan a rest. And the Buffs throwing long with a 31 point lead. The ball is thrown short, the intended receiver Rico Smith, and the crowd wants pass interference. But won't get it, I might add. Rico Smith was well covered. Joseph under threw the ball, and Smith made a nice attempt to come back and get it. But the crowd felt he was held if he was coming back to get it. Buffs defense has allowed only three touchdowns in the last 16 quarters of play. That's a pretty good defense. Second and ten. Throwing again. Incomplete. Chad Brown playing offense. Am I seeing this correctly? Number 34? No. You are not. That is Kendall Bussey, the big fullback. Vance Joseph has a wide open Christian Faria in the middle of the field but went to Kendall Bussey in the sideline they wanted pass interference there that was close I have to apologize for that last call Chad Brown the linebacker also wears 34 this is Kent Call run out of bounds and a flag will be thrown looks like a light hit on call Joel Stats might be the one flagged here. McCall's going to be run out of bounds well before first down yardage is made, and Stats right there just has to let him go. But instead kind of flings him to the ground. That's really not much of a call, and yet it was penalized. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. First down. Joel Stats. Senior linebacker, 6'2 and 231 pounds. It's a frustrated defense right now. It's a defense that came into the game thinking they could really handle the CU offense. An offense that was young and experienced, did not play well against Baylor. 
But they have played exceedingly well here in the first half, and they have completely dominated this game. 54 seconds to go in the first half. Two wide outs. Rico Smith and Mark Henry, and Vance Joseph is looking for one of them. He's got Henry, who might get into the end zone. Down to the two-yard line before his run out of bounds by Sean Lumpkin. Mark Henry with four catches on the day so far, including two biggies. What you're seeing here is more of a message to Stanford, really, than something for Minnesota. The Gophers don't have great team speed, and this shows Henry just a simple crossing pattern. And he is running away from people, except Sean Lumpkin, who knocks him out about the two-yard line. This will give Stanford much more to prepare for next week as the Buffs play the Cardinal in Palo Alto. First and goal from the two. The pitch to a wide open head call. Touchdown, CU. Ball has scored a touchdown in each of the first three games for the Buffs. The key to this play, Vance Joseph just makes the right decision. He rides Bussy into the line, makes the man commit at the end of the line of scrimmage, and the pitch to Kent Cole, who could have walked in backwards. Jim Harper? Yes, on the extra point. And the Buffs go up 38 to nothing. I said it earlier, Dave, after the touchdown pass to Rico Smith, the first touchdown pass of the day, it seemed too easy at the time, and it hasn't gotten any harder. See you offensively. They've been near perfect. Joseph forces the Golden Gopher to commit, and nobody has Kent Call. In option football, every man is assigned to somebody. The pitch man, the quarterback, and the fullback. And that time, Minnesota got messed up. Jay Lewenberg, the senior center for the Buffs. Something bothering him. Talking with Dave Burton, the head trainer. Well, it could be he's just getting ready to go up into the tunnel because the CU offense will not be on the field again this half. He looked discomforted about something, maybe a bit warm. Go down to the field and Mark McIntosh with a bit of news. Yeah, I think the deal with Jay Lundberg is he just doesn't feel real well. I know all during the first half he's been over there and after each series when he came over they put an ice cold towel over his head. I think maybe the combination of the heat and maybe the fact that he came into the ball game not feeling real well has been a little too much for the Buffs senior center. Well, fortunately for him and for CU it's 38 to nothing and he might get to rest the whole second half. Burger the kickoff. No return for Minnesota. Five out of six times today, Berger has put it out of the end zone on the kickoff. People underestimate what kind of weapon that really is. If your defense, every time they come in the field, can bet on the offense having 80 yards of territory to negotiate, that is a huge advantage. Sucks the air right out of the Gophers. Although the air might have been sucked out about two touchdowns ago. Yes, they are deflated, I think, safe to say. First and ten for Minnesota from their own 20-yard line. Pass intended for Cam Brees, broken up by Greg Baker. You're down 38 nothing. And all of a sudden, your arms become very, very short. Cam Brees usually is a good receiver, but he feels Beaker coming at him, and those arms just don't go up above your head. Therefore, you can't catch it. 215 yards of passing for the Buffs. 122 yards of rushing. I would imagine right now both teams saying to themselves, do we really have to play the second half? I think enough was proven in the first half so far. Fleetwood. Complete to Lewis Garrison at the 28 yard line. And I think Chad Brown has just picked up an unsportsmanlike play as he pushed number 39, Hunter. Good throw here by Fleetwood and an excellent catch. Terrific catch. That would have been good in the NFL if both feet got in. That ball, personal foul, 
on the defense. And Chad Brown is on the sideline, standing right by Bill McCartney, who walks away from him. Brown got into it with Antonio Carter, the fullback, and exchanged a couple of shoves. Now McCartney calls over the official and asks, who was it? And unfortunately for Chad, they will tell him. This will also give Minnesota a first down. The ball placed at the 43-yard line. 31 seconds to go, first half. So far, a route in CU's favor. 38 to nothing. Colorado four penalties, the Golden Gophers only one. It's been a pretty good play the first half. From a penalty standpoint, anyway. Fleetwood. Pushed up to the 48-yard line. Call it the 49. A gain of six. Clock winding down. 15 seconds to go in the half. Minnesota trying to get a playoff quickly. Will stop the clock. With four seconds to go. Is it time for a Hail Mary? Well, they didn't use their timeout. They had one timeout left and had about 17 seconds after Fleetwood was knocked down. If they wanted to take a couple of shots at the end zone, I would have thought they might have used that single timeout. Don Gutekunst and the rest of the Minnesota staff talking it over with the quarterback. I'm very, very surprised at what's happening here today for Minnesota defensively. I can't recall the last time I've seen such big holes blown into a defense, especially with a guy who used to be the defensive coordinator, John Gutekunst. And now Minnesota uses their last time out. It has to be a frustrating day for Fleetwood. Minnesota had its chances early to get on the scoreboard. They had three field goal attempts. One blocked, two of them missed. Be sure to join Dan Reeves and me each Monday evening at 6.30 for the Dan Reeves Show. We'll take a look back at the San Diego game with highlights and analysis from the coach, along with some very special interviews. That's the Dan Reeves Show, Mondays at 6.30, right here on Channel 4, the home of the Broncos. Notice how Dan's name is in big block letters and mine is in those little teeny tiny letters. Yeah, I, I did notice that. I wasn't going to bring it up, however, but since you did, what do you make of that? Well, it is the Dan Reeves show. That's what I thought. Four seconds to go. Minnesota will have time to get off one play. And CU has brought in a number of defensive backs, and they're lined up back at the 20-yard line because they expect Minnesota to throw the ball long and deep into the end zone. Fleetwood dumps it off to Antonio Carter. Run out of bounds at the 35, but it doesn't matter because that is the end of the first half. CU leads it 38 to nothing. A nice hand for the Buffs as they run off the field into the locker room. Not a whole lot you can say except, boys, keep it up. All right, Mark McIntosh on the field right now with Minnesota head coach John Gutekunst. Mark. Thank you very much, Les. I know you didn't like coming in or having to play CU after they lost to Baylor, and uh, you're proven to be very correct. Oh, very embarrassed. We uh, just no discipline in the secondary, killing us with the play-action game, and uh, when that happens, then everything you know goes bad. Offensively, you move the ball pretty well. Yeah, we've, been, we've been moving the ball uh, real well until you get to this point where they can play one thing. So, you know, it's, it's been a long half, but we'll try to regroup and give you a game. Thank you. John Gutekunst, Minnesota coach. They're trailing 38 zip. Last back to you. Boy, Goody, very honest, very disappointed in his defense today. Let's take a break. 38 to nothing. See you at the half. <laughs> 38 to nothing. See you. We'll return for more halftime activities from Boulder after these words and a message from Colorado. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan back with you in Boulder. 38 to nothing. CU over the Minnesota Gophers. CU with a very quick strike in the first quarter. Let's take a look at those first few scores for the Buffs. 
goes after the defense had been on the field. The first play from scrimmage, you see the great block by James Hill, which gives Darian Hagan enough time to spot a wide open Rico Smith. And the nice thing about that throw, Hagan got it up in the air and let Smith run onto it. He didn't try to drill Rico Smith, which he has done in the past. Get that ball up, as he does here to Mark Henry, who is all by his lonesome. That one from 30 yards, the second touchdown of the game, and the CU offense was off to a quick start. Lamont Warren, the freshman tailback, saw extensive play in action and will never have a hole bigger than this one to run through. Great job up front by Anderson. Dolan Jackson with the block, and Lamont Warren untouched into the end zone for yet another buff score. In between that second and third touchdown came a Jim Harper 50-yard field goal. So the Buffs led it 24 to nothing with a couple more scores to go. And let's take a look at those. Good play here. Again, Vance Joseph seeing extensive time. Watch the run by James Hill. Breaks the tackle there of Davis, the linebacker. Steps up inside. Lumpkin can't get him. Ducks behind the block of Sean Embry. And a great run by James Hill, the fullback. And that's after he came out of the game with a bad ankle. And then, of course, the final touchdown. Joseph rides the fullback with a nifty pitch to Kent Call. Minnesota didn't see him either, believe me. As Call scampered into the end zone, it's 38 nothing at halftime. Here are your first half stats. It's a bit deceiving, wouldn't you say? Well, I, I would say Minnesota had relative success offensively in the first part of the game. That's why you see their yardage there. They also kept the CU offense off the field. 18 minutes plus for Minnesota. Almost 12 for the Buffs. But what the Gophers didn't do defensively obviously was play the pass and they didn't score offensively when they had at least a couple of opportunities. What do you expect to see second half, Dave? You're going to see a lot of second and third stringers in the ballgame for CU. McCartney going to give him some work. You see Bill McCartney talking to offensive line coach Mike Berry probably talking about that. Who are we going to look at who do you want to go with? Who deserves some playing time? This year with such a young team, there will be close games, I can guarantee you, as conference play and also Stanford next week. So you want to give some young kids as much quality time as you can. John Gutenkust, on the other hand, trying to establish something, I'm guaranteeing he uh, had a harsh conversation with his defensive players in the locker room. Said he was embarrassed. They just broke down defensively right from the start. Hooten Coots, the gentleman who just put on the headphones and the white baseball kit. Aaron Peepcorn will be kicking off for Minnesota. He's a junior out of Austin, Texas, a redshirt last year. Who does the kicking off? Mike Schalberg does the field goal kicking off for the Gophers. The games around the region today, Air Force in action, CSU in action. Wyoming in action. We'll try to get you the scores as the second half develops. Right now, Minnesota opening the second half by kicking off to the bus. Fielded by Charles Johnson, but he elects not to run it out. So the Buffs will start with it at their own 20. The second half is underway. Charles Johnson, the sophomore out of San Bernardino, California. Right there, Vance Joseph out of Marrero, Louisiana, taking the reins from Darian Hagan at quarterback. Hagan is not hurt. He's just getting a rest. When you're up 38 to nothing, no need to have Hagan in the ballgame. Kent Call gets the call. A three-yard gain to the 23. Good chance here in the second half to take a long look at that tailback spot. Call the starter. Lamont Warren moved up to number two. I would guess we may see Darnell Brooks, who has recently moved from the defense to the offense. He's currently the third tailback, formerly of TJ. Second and seven for the Buffs. Call again. A nice hole. First down yardage up to the 34. Well, we said this last week about Ken Call. He's come under some criticism. Mainly because he's not Eric Bieniemy, And a lot of CU fans and maybe even some of the media spoiled by Bieniemy's success. But Call has done a good job for the Buffs the first three games. Well, they're used to seeing a different style of running back. And again, the counter tray, a good job offensively. 
Jim Hansen, Dolan Jackson from the right side pulling. Call has those long strides. Here's the reverse pitch to Charles Johnson. Spins away across midfield down to the Minnesota 48. Charles Johnson, six feet tall, 185 pounds. Got a little work last year as a freshman. He's getting a lot of work this year. Second time we've seen the reverse today. Kind of reminds you last year, number nine catching the reverse, Mike Pritchard, except this is Charles Johnson, and pretty good move right there as he spins away from the tackle. That was Joel Statz, the linebacker, and Charles Johnson, the sophomore, has yet another first down. First and ten from the 47. Joseph, nowhere to go, gains one yard. Todd Wolkall brings him down, along with Ben Williams. Colorado offensively came into this game a bit hesitant and certainly without great confidence. You take a look now. I wonder what they're thinking. One play, touchdown. Seven plays, starting their 21, touchdown. They fumbled one time that stopped the drive, and that's really been the end of it. Second and nine, Joseph. Complete the call. A nice move inside the 35. And another CU first down. Conversely, you look at Minnesota's scoring drives. There are no scoring drives. Those are their drives. Four plays and a fumble. They had a field goal blocked after an 11-play drive. Every, but every drive starts on their 20. That's what we were talking about. Mitch Berger, a huge weapon for this Colorado football team. Full house backfield. Three running backs lined up behind Joseph. Call gets it inside the 30, down to the 26. Wolko again in on the tackle. Hey, you were talking earlier as we look at the replay. Take a look up front. Offensive lines really establish the territory a running back can go into and can't call with a huge hole. Second and three. Call again. Met very quickly by Dennis Capella. I was starting to say you uh, referred earlier to Darnell Brooks. We might get a look at him today. And that would be nice. Had such a great career at Thomas Jefferson. They won the state championship in Herman Motes' final year there a couple years ago. Darnell Brooks recruited here at CU as a running back. There's a man. I'm sorry, Les. That's Go ahead. all right. Quickly made into a DB. There's a man that'll be watching uh, the Braves and the Dodgers tonight, as we will. Braves a half game out in front as they beat the Dodgers last night 3 0. I'm, I'm anxious to see Brooks. Very good high school player. Well, we can give you a couple scores from around the nation right now. In the Big Eight, seventh-ranked Oklahoma leads Utah State at the half, 14 to seven. Still in the second quarter, I should say. There's a player down on the field. It's Anthony Bryant. The right defensive end for Minnesota. Looks like he got the wind knocked out of him. Minnesota, again, is a defense that is big and strong, but does not possess great speed. We said that right from the top, and that has been exposed as a weakness here by the Colorado offense. Games around the region. San Diego State is at Air Force this afternoon. CSU is at Southern Mississippi. I see a banner wishing Kent Paul a happy birthday. Texas Tech is at Wyoming this afternoon. And a game being widely watched, or at least it will be widely watched, in North Nebraska. Vance Joseph takes it around left end inside the 15 yard line. And a CU first down. The nice thing about this play, Vance Joseph will stretch the defense. Watch how long he'll run parallel down the line of scrimmage. He will force the contained man to make a decision right there. That's number 26, Sean Lumpkin. You can't let Lumpkin play both. So you run right to him, make him commit to the pitch man, and then duck up inside. That's an excellent job of execution by Vance Joseph. First and 10 from the 13th. Kent 
called again. Tries to spin, but he's caught in mid-spin at the 11. A gain of two yards. A few more scores to give you. Notre Dame blasting Michigan State 42 to 10 in the fourth quarter in South Bend, Indiana. I don't think they took kindly to their experience uh, in Michigan last week. You see Air Force leading San Diego State. Actually, San Diego State is leading Air Force 14 to 7. San Diego State, of course, with that young man Marshall Falk, who ran for 386 yards last week. Pounds his way inside the 10. Down to the 8. A gain of 3. Derek Fisher brings him down. Same play that you saw Lamont Warren score on late in the second quarter. The counter trade. Good block by Kendall Bussey on the top. Tough yardage inside by Kent Coffin. CU still playing primarily. It's first and second stringers. In spite of three eight penalty runs. Third and six. Joseph looking into the end zone. There's a great Eugene right there. Puts on a move, gets inside the five. Boy, he faked Ken Brown right out of his shorts to get it inside the five. Vance Joseph showing he's as fleet of foot as the starting quarterback, Darian Hagan. Huffing and puffing right now. I think Vance would like to buy a minute or two to catch his breath here. So the Buffs get right back up to the line of scrimmage. It's fourth and one. They're going for it. Kent Call hit quickly. He's going to be close. Russ Heath out of Aurora, Colorado, made the stop along with Ken Seabury. Gary Isaacson hurt for the Gophers. Going to be short the first down try, and Isaacson still still down. Isaacson might be the one Minnesota Gopher who's played well on defense this day. We called out his name a lot in the first half on the tackles. Well, we've got 9.29 to go in the third quarter. The score remains the same, 38 to nothing. The Buffaloes lead Minnesota. Well, the Buffs fans are happy today, and why not? 38 to nothing. That was the score at halftime, and that's the score right now. With five and a half minutes gone in the third quarter. Minnesota takes over the ball on downs. It's first and ten from their own four-yard line. Antonio Carter drives up the middle. That's about three yards. Chad Brown makes the stop. CU still his starting defense on the field. And I think the reason you're seeing the starting defense play is because they didn't play very well in the first half. Didn't give up any points, but gave up, in Bill McCartney's estimation, way too many yards. Minnesota able to run the football against this defense, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them play a couple, three series here in the second half. And if you know the coaching mentality, you know they feel it is never too early, or too late, I should say, to, to take your first string out. You always want to be as safe as possible. I think they're safe in the game. I just think that this is a way to, to get those guys to play. It's a hot day. You take them out, you almost give them a, a pat in the back for a job that I'm sure the coaching staff feels is not well done. Third and three for Minnesota. Three running backs lined up behind Montana Clinton as a quarterback. They give again to Carter. He's up to the 16. And that's a Minnesota first down. Antonio Carter. Joel Steed made the stop. The Aurora Hinkley graduate. 
It's been a rough year for Joel Steed, even though he's a preseason All-American pick. In spring ball, he had a virus and lost a ton of weight, wasn't able to participate much. And right now, he's nursing a broken hand. And he's got a bandage on it. He's hardly missed a play in his first three games. That pass incomplete. Intended for Ken McClintock, broken up by Eric Hamilton. Let's go down to the AstroTurf and Mark McIntosh. The hot AstroTurf. You guys were correct. Obviously, the first team is still in there. John Knutson, well, now he's leaving the ball game, but he was getting some experience calling the defensive signals. Now Greg Beaker is going back out in front and calling the signals, but they were giving the freshman a chance to call the defensive signals there for a while and give him a little experience. A lot of youth on this CU team. An opportunity to get some work here. Chad Brown puts on a good rush. The pass is incomplete to Chuck Rios. And you can give Chad Brown credit for making Markel Fleetwood get rid of that ball maybe a little earlier than he wanted to. Well, a nice afternoon here in Boulder. Mid 80s, a little hotter down on the turf. None of the fans have left yet, despite the blowout. Ooh, we'll bring a picnic basket, sandwich, a little something to drink. Might as well spend time here as well as in the park. Third and ten. And Fleetwood is sacked. The first sack of the game for the Buffs. Let's see who climbs off that pile. Kent, or uh, Ron Wolfork and Chad Brown, the Talk two outside linebackers. We've talked a lot about those outside linebackers, and they, this time, just completely collapsed the pocket. You'll see Hunter try to block Wolfork, and Brown actually gets there first, but both outside guys coming, and both guys will be counted on heavily this year in the option. 7.22 to go in the third quarter. The Buffs still lead it 38 to nothing. There you see Chip Brixius being helped off. An offensive lineman's nightmare. You know what's going on in front of you, but you can never tell behind you. Chip Brixius, right side of the screen, blocking, and gets cut from behind as the pile gets him. Leonard Renfro trying to get past him, and the uh, right knee gets sandwiched in between a lot of people. Well, it's not enough. Minnesota's going to go home with a wounded ego. They're going to go home with some wounded bodies also. Brixie is the third play to go down for Minnesota. The punt from Kaufman to Darian Hagan. And Darian does some dancing down the sideline. A nice run back down to the Minnesota 31-yard line. Darian Hagan is fast becoming one of the country's best punt returners. He does not need much. You'll see him spot the hole right there. That burst of speed enables him to get up the field. He's got very sure hands. And as he plays more, he's starting to become more comfortable as a punt returner. Turner, a 24-yard return there. He has got quick feet. Things you can't teach. That's what Barry Hagan has. Hagan, one of the punting return leaders in the nation with an 18.1 average. This is Lamont Warren for the box. Inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line. A gain of six. Lamont Warren getting a lot of work today. The freshman out of California. He's got 4-3 speed in the 40-yard dash. A high school All-American. He actually played quarterback in high school. Must have thrown the ball pretty well because over his high school career, he completed 62% of his passes. And talk about talent. Lamont Warren also plays the viola. Second and four. Vance Joseph over the middle. Tipped away by Ken Seabrook. Charles Johnson was open in the end zone. He was flat out diving to make the catch, but Seabree broke it up. Nice job by Seabree, who was playing the right corner. Nobody out in that area, so he's able to fall back to the middle of the field and just got a hand on that one. The Minnesota safeties are getting beaten like a drum all day long. There is nobody back there to cover the buffs. 
when they get deep into that secondary. Third and four. Joseph. Complete to Michael Westbrook in the game for the first time today. Down to the seven yard line before Sean Lumpkin makes the tackle. Whole idea of this play is to get the ball to Charles Johnson and make him miss. Mays will try for the initial tackle. Just spins away and Lumpkin, the strong safety, has to bring him down. That's a play that CU wants to incorporate more and more in their offense this year. And they've used it in the first two and a half games. Westbrook, the freshman redshirt out of Detroit. First and goal from the eight. They go up the middle, inside the five. Lamont Warren, with a gain of four. Plays the viola. I'll bet he worries after every game about his fingers. You need good fingers to play the viola. <laughs> you, you, you break them playing football, you can't play the viola anymore. Second and five from the five. This is Warren again. He'll go in. The freshman's second touchdown of the day. Warren makes a nice read here. It's a lead play. And watch Lamont Warren bounce it outside when he realizes nobody is there. Got enough speed. He can outrun a lot of folks to the corner. And I would say Lamont Warren has had an impressive debut in his freshman year. Jim Harper's kick is good. And the Buffs go over the 40-point mark. It's 45 to nothing. We've got 5.28 to go in the third quarter. Andre Thaddeus, number one, the free safety, untouched, and yet he expects Lamont Warren to come in the tackle hole. Warren just breaks away from him and outruns him. Good job up front, Clint Moore. Craig Anderson, the left tackle, five plays, 30 yards, a minute and 36 seconds, and Lamont Warren, his second touchdown as a collegiate. Warren having a very nice day. He's run the ball eight times, 52 yards, two touchdowns. Six and a half yards of carry. Mitch Berger to kick off. This one's returnable, but Chuck Rios decides to put the knee down. So like every other drive this year, Minnesota will start from its own 20. That man right there is the third string quarterback for the Buffs, Cordell Stewart, number 10. And he's not going to play. Unless something happens to either Vance Joseph or Darian Hagan. They want to redshirt Stewart. He has been very, very impressive so far in practice. The rule is if you play even one play during the year, you cannot be redshirted. The Buffs would rather have him stay on the sideline, and that would leave him four years of eligibility. Markel Fleetwood keeps. Gains one yard. The other way you can get redshirted is if you haven't played a lot during the year and you get hurt early in the year. Then the NCAA will allow you to redshirt that year. And you keep that year of eligibility. Well, let's go down to the field once again to Mark McIntosh. All right, another young freshman is in at inside linebacker. You'll see on your screen there, number 46, Ted Johnson. Well, wouldn't you know it? He just ran off the field as the Buffs went to the nickel package. Back up to you guys. Clintwood looking for a receiver. Buys some time. And runs it out of bounds at the 25. A gain of four. Brian Diet there to run him out. It's the kind of play Fleetwood made last week against San Jose State where he'd buy himself some time and eventually threw a 20-yard touchdown pass. Jeff Bruner can't quite make the play as he runs into one of his buff teammates, Rodell Guest. Ted Johnson now back on the field with linebacker for the bus. up the middle. Dragged down by Ted Johnson. The freshman out of Vista, California. Oh, 
Well, the Bucks have gone deep into the bench now on defense. Let's see if the same holds for offense after Minnesota gets off this punt. Darian Hagan will not return this punt. Looks like he's completely taking the rest of the day off. Rico Smith will return this one. And he's back at his own 30-yard line. Gets off the kick. A nice kick. Smith from his own 25. Running sideways, and that doesn't usually work. And it doesn't for Rigo that time. He's pushed out. After a return of one yard. Well, we told you earlier about the Dan Reeves show, Monday nights at 6.30. If you're interested in being part of the studio audience for the show, tickets are going fast. We still have a few December dates open. Just send a self-addressed stamped envelope with your choice of dates to Dan Reeves Tickets, P.O. Box 5012, Denver, Colorado, 80217. And Cordell Stewart is playing. He is This playing. may be the surprise of the year. Cordell Stewart, a heralded running back. And you see why. Around the left end for first down yardage. Stewart is a freshman out of Marrero, Louisiana. Playing quarterback for the Buffs now, a high school All-American. Bill, Bill McCartney had said earlier that he wanted to redshirt Cordell Stewart, but he must feel like that now's the time to get the freshman ready in case something should happen to Hagen. He's bigger than both Darian Hagen and Vance Joseph. 6'2", you see 205 pounds. An excellent arm. I don't know that you'll see his arm too many times here this afternoon with the score being 45 to nothing. But here's a kid that has been impressive so far, 18 years old. You should see him wing the ball downfield. Oh, he's got a gun. As Dave told you, it is a romp here at Folsom Field. 45 to nothing, see you. We've got 3.40 to go in the third quarter. Reminiscent of many of the games last year. When CU blew almost everybody out. There's a telling shot on the sideline for Minnesota. Gary Isaacson, he was hurt earlier. And I'm sure that's not the only thing hurting him right now. One look at the scoreboard is making all the Gophers feel like Gary Isaacson. First down, the Buffs from their own 38. I'm very surprised to see Cordell Stewart in the ballgame, as I know you are too, Dan. Well, it tells me that Bill McCartney is going to play him this year. That he feels like Cordell Stewart can challenge Vance Joseph at the number two quarterback. And should something happen to Darian Hagan, it may be competition between Stewart and Joseph. Cordell Stewart is more of a mold of a Kale Gundy type. He's an option quarterback that can run the option, and yet he's got a terrific arm. He can also drop straight back in the pocket and throw it. More option teams are going to kids like this than ever before. Stewart will keep this one. Big hole. Cuts back. Cuts back again. Almost gets away. Down to the 26-yard line. Dennis Capella finally caught up to him. Boy, he, he did cut some cutback running like a tailback right there. I think what's distinct about his running ability, he doesn't look like he's moving. He's a very long strider, not like Hagen or Joseph, and he's strong. You see him just push aside a Minnesota Golden Goal for 33 yards on the run. Plus a good looking young team. I'm telling you, the next two or three years, CU fans are going to have a lot to look at. This is Call. He'll get in. Kent Call, touchdown, his second of the day. They are feasting on this Minnesota defense. a gopher hunt, Dave. Kid Call, another freshman. Counter Trey from the right side. See Craig Anderson get a good block there. And Kid Call looked like he was going in hunting for a golf ball in the woods and all of a sudden just popped out all by himself. This is Berger on the extra point attempt. He usually doesn't kick these. And Berger puts it through. Usually Jim Harper is out there for field goals and extra points. But when you're up 52 to nothing, you can give some other guys some work. Craig Anderson, number 70, and Clint Moore, 66. Both pull from the left side. Moore actually loses his footing. It looked like Kent Call was going to be knocked down, and nobody put their arms around him. So 
We said, all right, I'll just take it to the end zone, show it to the fans. Call has looked good here this afternoon as well. Dave, yeah, I wonder if the rankings are in the back of Bill McCartney's mind. Last week they were 12. They lose to Baylor. They go down to 19. You think Bill McCartney is trying to bring his squad back up close to the top 10? I don't think so. I, I don't think right now the rankings are important. Frankly, and I think McCartney more interested in getting his young team ready. They've got a tough game next week against Stanford. Stanford is a much better team than Minnesota, both offensively and defensively. And you just have to look back to last year when Stanford came into Boulder and played a senior-dominated CU offense and nearly won the game. They shut down CU off the line. to sit next week's game out because it is the Buffs' first road game in Palo Alto, California at Stanford University. And the Buffs will take a 2-1 record into Palo Alto. Kent Call having a fine afternoon. You just saw his second touchdown run. He has 66 yards rushing on the day in just 12 rushing attempts. So an average of better than five a game, uh, a rush, I should say. Berger kicking off. A low line drive taken by Antonio Carter and smashed up at the 31 yard line. Take a look at it again. Kent Call ducks up inside the block of Craig Anderson. And he's home free. Scoring drive. Four plays and 74 yards. Call the 27-yard score. And they've had many quick scoring drives here this afternoon. It's been a big play afternoon. 52 to nothing the Buffs. 2.32 to go in the third quarter. Markel Fleetwood. By Greg Lindsay. A nice pass defense, but there's a flag on the field, and Lindsay might get penalized for that move. Well, he's definitely going to get flagged. He got it with his left hand, but his right hand was on the back of the tight end. Pass interference on the defense. First down. Take a look at it. Lindsay will reach across with his left hand, but his right hand, I'll tell you what. That's a terrible call. Pat Evans to tie it in, and Lindsey's right hand, you could see daylight between his arm and Lindsey's pads. Not a good call. That's an automatic first down for Minnesota. Take a look at it. Look at the daylight between his right arm and the pads. He reaches with his left. Now look where his right hand is. Completely off the player. That should have been no flag. Minnesota from its own 45-yard line. Antonio Carter up to the 49. Ball in a gain of four. John Knutson there to make the stop. Knutson, the freshman out of Great Falls, Montana. First, John Guttenkoops is probably saying, we're crying out loud, we're down 52 to nothing. At least I can get a call here and there. Antonio Carter having a pretty good afternoon. 18 rushes, 76 yards. Second and five for the Gophers from midfield. They're running in reverse. But it looked like Minnesota fell back onto the ball. It looked like they were going to pitch the ball back to the quarterback after the second handoff. You know, Les, I don't think so. I think, I think this was a reverse. The quarterback's looking to get a block there. And had he been able to hang on to the football, that's Omar Douglas. That thing would have gone for big yards as they had the CU defense really moving to the right side. Rodell Guest, the linebacker on the left side, was caught up in the play action, and that was going to be positive yards had Douglas held on to the football. Third and 17 for Minnesota. 1.40 to go in the third quarter. Fleetwood. Complete. Up to the 47. The receiver was Keswick Joyner. 
see you this year when their opposition has been third and more than nine in 15 tries has not given up a first down yet. And they don't break that string now. Last year, in 70 tries, when teams had third and more than nine, they converted seven times. So you want to stay out of third and long against this defense. Minnesota will punt the ball. Dean Kaufman from his own third. Rico Smith. Let's it drop and bound into the end zone. So the Buffs will have the ball at their own 20. 57 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Buffs lead it 52 to nothing, as you can tell from this shot of the crowd. A lot to be happy about today. A 53-yard punt by Dean Coffin. Well, let's see if CU brings any of the new guys into the ball game here. And while we do that, look over the numbers, we'll go down to Mark McIntosh on the field. Thank you, Les. Lamont Warren is in a tailback again. I was talking to Ben Gregory before the ball game, and he said it took a little convincing as far as talking to Bill McCartney to convince him that Lamont Warren was ready to see action. And obviously, Lamont Warren has proven Ben Gregory correct, that he was ready for Big 8 football, and he's done a wonderful job today. Quarterback Cordell Stewart fumbled the ball on that play, but fell right back onto it, so the Buffs will keep the ball. And a loss of one yard on that play. Well, this is going to be a long plane ride home for the Gophers. Well, if you want to be a college coach, you have to deal with days like this, and it's tough enough for you, but trying to get 18 and 19 year olds to forget it and get ready for next week, they play Pitt. That's, uh, that's your biggest challenge, I think. Flag on the field. Well, amazingly, most of the crowd has stuck around for this game. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense, second down. It's like those that watch a bullfight sticking around to see how many times the bull gets stuck. I'm <laughs> saying they're masochists. Oh, sadomasochists. Well, that penalty goes against the buffs. So it'll be second and 16 from their own 14-yard line. And again, a flag on the field. Well, this is what happened when you bring a number of new players into the game, kids that haven't had a lot of experience. Things are a little off-kilter. The timing isn't good. Dead ball foul. Encroachment on the offense. Second down. The rhythm isn't there. Maybe a series or two, and we'll see a little better ball in the fourth quarter from these young kids. Is that the look of a man who's ahead 52 to nothing? <laughs> no. That's the look of a man who's just seen his offense make three consecutive penalties. The clock winding down. We are at the end of the third quarter. The CU Buffaloes remain well in front, 52 to nothing over Minnesota. we were at the commercial Cordell Stewart with a quick snap from center ran the ball 17 yards caught the Gophers and us by surprise well that was the uh, actually the last play of the third quarter everybody thought the quarter was over and for some reason the officials stopped the clock with one second to go the scoreboard clock we were just told you can't uh, in the corner on an offensive penalty which is true and that's why they uh, they ran that play Clock did run out, but there was a flag on CU. And that's why the play was run. So we'll start the fourth quarter. 52 to nothing, CU. The Buffs from their own 27 yard line. Cordell Stewart at quarterback. Goes up the middle. Across the 30 to the 33. And Lamont Warren ran that ball. CU with its second string offensive line in the game right now. We see Chad Hammond, there is Gottlieb, Roger Ivey, Chris Stortz getting some work. Maybe a yard. Here's some third quarter stats for you. Or I should say the stats all the way through the third quarter. 
The Buffaloes have gone over 500 yards in total offense. They've more than doubled Minnesota. Minnesota with 28 yards in the third quarter. Second and nine for the bus. And their own 34. Cordell Stewart keeps it. Reaches up to the 39. Call it a gain of five. It'll be third down. Boy, he is impressive running the ball. They say his strength is throwing. I can't wait to see him put the ball in the air. Well, usually when you gain more than 400 yards in a ball game, you win. And that's exactly what the Buffs have done. 28 wins, no losses, and one tie when they've gone over the 400-yard mark in total offense. Third and four. Stewart keeps it again. He'll be well short of the first down. And the Buffs will have to punt the ball away. Well, a few minutes ago, we looked at Gary Isaacson. At least his head was up a little. Now his head is down almost to his waist. It has been a very long day for the Minnesota Gophers. Hard to keep your head up when you're getting beat 52 to nothing. Berger the punt. A fair catch called for. It's fumbled. The Bucks are there. And it's Tony Senna recovering the fumble. You cannot advance a fumbled punt. But the Bucks have the ball anyway with another chance to score from the Minnesota nine-yard line. A 51-yard punt. Well, when things go bad, they just continue. That's a very, very tough catch. An over-the-shoulder catch. And Lewis Garrison can't make it. There's Tony Sinna. And the Buffs in business again. Garrison would have been better served to let that thing go. It hit about the nine. And possibly would have made the end zone. Well, as the song said, when you hot, you hot. And when you not, you not. And Minnesota, not. Not today. 12.47 to go in the ballgame. Cordell Stewart fumbles the snap again. It gets the handoff off. Gain of a couple yards. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. What do you have, Mark? Well, that's the guy that just carried that ball. Local fans will recognize the name of Darnell Brooks two years ago. Starred at Thomas Jefferson as they won the state championship. And he... Last year was a redshirt freshman and he was playing tailback. Then they switched him to cornerback in the spring, but now they've switched him back to tailback. And that was his first carry as a CU buck. Darnell comes out of the game. Lamont Warren back in. And Warren gets the call. Bounces his way inside the five. He'll get forward progress. Before he was pushed back. Let's see where it's spotted. four-yard line. So it'll be third and four from the four. For the last two games Minnesota has played against Big 18s, Watt by Nebraska last year and now by the West. This is Stewart. He is in for the touchdown. Cordell Stewart his first touchdown as a collegian. Again, Cordell Stewart does a good job of keeping. He had Darnell Brooks for a touchdown as well, had he wanted to pitch the football. Strong enough to break a tackle and a four-yard touchdown run his first of his career. I'm betting you'll see many more times Cordell Stewart in the end zone. Mitch Berger will once again try the extra point. Mark Henry on the hold. And another Minnesota Gopher is down on the field hurt. It's Andre Davis, their starting middle linebacker. Cordell Stewart getting congratulated. 
First touchdown, he scored as a CU buff. We're going to take a break here. 11.20 to go in the game. CU leading 58 to nothing and about to try for an extra point. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you at Folsom Field. The Buffs and Cordell Stewart just scored a touchdown. There was a delay in the extra point attempt because a Minnesota Gopher was hurt. Extra point attempt is botched. Mark Henry throws to David Arterbury, but it's incomplete. The two-point conversion, no good. So the score remains CU 58 and Minnesota nothing. Last year, the biggest blowout for CU came against Kansas State. It was a 61-point victory. The final score was 64-3. to Here's that Cordell Stewart touchdown. Good job by the freshman. Once again, sidestep trouble there, and yet stretches the defense, runs to the perimeter, could have pitched to Brooks, but cut it up and got his first touchdown. Well, that last drive went three plays, just nine yards after the fumbled punt by Minnesota. And Stewart took it in. I started to mention earlier, the last time Minnesota played a team from the Big 8 Conference, it was Nebraska last year, and the Cornhuskers beat them 56 to nothing. And it took the Gophers a while to recover from that one last year. And other than last year, the last time a Colorado football team scored this many points was back in 1970. They beat Iowa State 61 to 10. Of course, last year, Colorado beat Kansas State 64 to 3. Still a lot of time here, though. A lot of time left for damage. Well, Mitch Berger and Jim Harper have switched roles here. Berger is kicking the extra points, and Jim Harper is kicking off. And he's asked Julian Hayward to hold the ball on the tee because the wind is whipping up a little down on the turf and won't stay up by itself. And that's the only thing that's gone wrong for CU all day. Harper with a good leg down to the goal line. Chuck Rios. Up the middle and pushed by David Arterbury at the 25-yard line. This actually is Minnesota's best position to start a drive all day. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Yeah, you guys have been talking about points scored in a ball game. The all-time record for most points in one game for the Buffs is 65. So if they get a touchdown and an extra point, they'll tie the record, which was set against Arizona in Tucson October 11, 1958. There you go, some trivia. New quarterback in the ball game for Minnesota. It's Scott Shafter, a senior. And he completes his first pass of the day to Chuck Rios, and after that hit, Rios probably wishes he didn't catch it. Greg Lindsay stuck him good. There's a penalty flag on the field. Schaffner lost his uh, starting quarterback spot early last year, played in only a couple of games. He's thrown 20 touchdown passes in the last three years, so he can throw the ball. Receiver downfield on the offense, first down. Number 15, Texas A&M loses today in Tulsa, 35 to 34. So they will fall out of the top 20 as you take a look at Scott Schaffner's numbers for last year. Schaffner went to high school at the legendary Moeller Prep in Cincinnati, Ohio. First and 15 for the Gophers from their own 19-yard line. Up the middle, intercepted. This could go for six. It's Chris Hudson. And he gets it inside the 10-yard line. Chris Hudson, the freshman redshirt out of Houston, Texas. Schaffner thought he had the receiver all by himself, and it looked like he took a little bit off this football. Hudson able, able to make a nice break on the ball, and 
Chris Hudson wanted to score here. He's running as fast as he can, trying to take the angle away from Schaffner, who just barely hauls him down. There's a good look at Chris Hudson. Playing very, very well so far. Getting a lot of time for the Buffs. Done very well the first three games this year. The give goes to David Arterberry. His first carry of the day. Arterberry, the junior, out of Mullen High School in Denver, Colorado. Sociology major. Arterberry is six foot one, two hundred pounds. We still have a lot of time left in this game, so a lot of guys are going to get a lot of work. 10 10 to go. Michael Westbrook also in the game for the Buffs. That was Darnell Brooks finding a little room on the left side. Down to the four yard line. Third and goal from the four for CU. That's Brooks again, not much room that time. Maybe a yard. And the crowd yelling for Bill McCartney and the bus to go for it on fourth down. But you have to go for it here. If you kick a field goal, that's really rubbing it in the face of John Goodencoats. The, the way to do it here is run something very simple, a lead if you don't score. Fine, but you never line up and kick a field goal ahead 58 to nothing. I would imagine Bill McCartney being a former Big Ten coach at Michigan would show a little empathy for Gutenkunst in Minnesota of the Big Ten. I'll tell you, Bill McCartney's been on the other end of these scores, so he can understand it. And there you see just a quarterback sneak. You don't want to rub anything in. And I'm sure John Gutenkunst appreciates it from Bill McCartney. So the Buffs give it up on downs. Minnesota will have the ball at its own three yard line. A long way to go on a long afternoon for the Gophers. Tonight at 6.30, catch the beat. Broncos beat with Gary Miller. Let's take a look back at last week's game against the Seahawks as well as take a look ahead to tomorrow's game against the San Diego Chargers. It's Broncos beat tonight at 6.30 right here on Channel 4, the home of the Broncos. Ken McClintock, the carry for Minnesota. Got a couple of yards out of that before Corey Smith brought him down. Corey Smith, the third string nose tackle for the Buffs out of New Orleans, a freshman redshirt. And his dad, Cornelius Smith, played for the Chicago Bears of the NFL. Scott Shafter, the new quarterback. This is his second series in place of Markel Fleetwood. That's Antonio Carter. Again brought down by Corey Smith. And Carter is laying on the turf hurt. Boy, when you're getting blown out like this, you say to yourself, Let's just stay healthy the rest of the game, but Minnesota hasn't been able to do that either. And this is a guy they can ill afford to lose. 6'1", 226 pounds, a sophomore, and he is a vital cog in Minnesota's offense. Well, it's hard to keep your interest if you're on the Minnesota sideline, but the coaching staff doesn't have a choice. In fact, to add insult to injury, they're going to have to look at this game tape a few more times, too. But I tell you what, the coaches will, but this might be one, as you see Carter walk off the field, that they don't show their kids. This might be one the coaches view and then burn and say, let's worry about Pittsburgh this coming Saturday. We didn't play well, so let's get better. 
And how do the players feel? When you were in college and, and oh, you, you don't took a loss, do you think about a game like this oh, the week sure. after? Sure, you don't want to see it. Pass is complete. To Omar Douglas, and he is whacked at the 19. Penalty flag down. There's a flag thrown immediately after the ball was snapped. And Omar Carter, you like to catch passes, but you don't like to get hit like that. Ronnie Bradford and a host of Colorado Buffaloes to Shannon Campbell there as well. 12 men participated in the play for the defense. First down. Well, no wonder there were a host of Buffaloes. <laughs> One too many on the field. They were everywhere. By the way, we just took a shot of the Minnesota sideline and their coaching staff. The CU coaching staff, Les Steckel behind us, the receivers coach, he's already leaving the booth to go down to the field because the game is so well in hand. But Dave, you've got to tell your friend Les not to talk to us while we're broadcasting. He coached me in college. He tells me, I don't tell him. The pass is complete to Chuck Rios. And he scampers up across the 45. Les Steckel, of course, the former head coach of the NFL Minnesota Vikings. I wonder if he likes this. He was fired by the Vikings, and now a team from Minnesota comes down here and gets whooped. First down for Minnesota. 7.05 to go in the game. Minnesota at its own 46. Chuck Rios up the middle. A little space there. Cross midfield down to the 46. Dave, this is a situation where the Minnesota coaching staff probably wishes it could travel with more people because some of the starters are still in on offense. You don't want to get them hurt, but since you only travel with 60, you've got to play a lot of those first stringers despite the score. Yep, although I'll tell you at home, you might not want to toss your young kids into this anyway. Scarred for life. <laughs> Second and three. This is Rios again. He pushes the pile down to the 41, and he gets the first down. Corey Smith, once again, we've been calling his name quite a bit. Six minutes and ten seconds of agony left for Minnesota. Darius Holland now in the ballgame. For the bus at defensive end. Shafter wants the throw. Incomplete. He threw behind the intended receiver, Lewis Garrison. And speaking of Darius Holland, keep that name in mind. And the next few years and even this one Holland 6'4 and 275 pounds he's a freshman from Las Cruces New Mexico and he got to Schaffner right about as Schaffner delivered the ball they are very very high on Mr. Holland he was the player of the year in high school in New Mexico second and ten from the bus 42 Schaffner to the sideline that ball is tipped and almost intercepted Rodell House Guest got a hand on it. There's an interesting story. House Guest played for the CU basketball team last year, quit school to try out for the WBL, the World Basketball League, six foot five and under. He actually was on the roster of the Memphis entry in the WBL and then was quickly cut. Rodell decided to come back to school. You are allowed to come back and play a sport other than the one you were a pro at. Rodell now playing football once again for the Buffs. Third and ten for Minnesota. The screen pass batted away. That time it was to Shannon Campbell, a highly touted freshman out of Houston, Texas. Look at the size on to Shannon Campbell. 6'6 six, six and 250. Gets up high enough to take Shatner's pass. 
That looked like the field goal block of last week. Santana Dodson, the Shannon Campbell, another freshman. 6'6", 250, and a linebacker, not a defensive lineman. As soon as you hear the numbers on him, you think DL. No, linebacker, and there's a big one. Minnesota punts. It's high, and Rico Smith calls for a fair catch. That's a penalty. When a player calls for a fair catch, you cannot touch him. You can't get within two yards of him. You certainly, you certainly can't whack him. And that's what Marquette Williams just did. You know you're in trouble when not only did one flag throw, but two, three, four officials throw their flag. <laughs> and Rico if Smith, we had one, we'd have thrown it. Rico Smith says, I'll catch this. And Marquette Williams said, oh, shucks. Why would I do that? But you know what? You lose concentration in a game like this. You, you lose focus. Your head's not in the ball game. You're getting blown out 58 to nothing. And it's just hard to keep your mind on the game. This is a 15-yard penalty. Catch interference. First down. Five thirty-four to go. And I don't think Minnesota can make any more mistakes than they have already. We'll take a break. See you. 58 to nothing. This picante sauce says it's better than the salsa made in New York City. They don't say. Well, I'd say that graphic tells the story right there. 58 to nothing. You know, Minnesota came in here, not too bad a team, a 1-0 record. Came back last week to beat San Jose State, which also isn't a bad team. Matt Bell you see in the ballgame now. That was his first carry for the Buffs from the tailback position. Like Darnell Brooks, a graduate of Thomas Jefferson High School. Look at that, CU, 318 yards rushing. Five of their touchdowns have come on the ground. Second and three. Matt Bell again. Colorado with 167 yards rushing against Wyoming, 168 against Baylor. They've almost, almost matched two games worth of output here in one. Time to focus ahead to Stanford. I think that might be one of the key games of the season. In Palo Alto, Stanford has not played very well early, and yet the talented team that will be thinking about last year here in Boulder. First and ten, David Arterbury across midfield, and that's another first down. <laughs> Jeff Rosco made the tackle. Good push up front. Arterbury breaks the tackle, and guys are just happy to get in the game. Arterbury's a junior and wants more playing time, and he's trying to make the most of it here in the last four minutes. They have a plethora of talented running backs. It's tough to get time in this backfield. This is Bell, one of the many. They've got Kent Call, the starter, Lamont Warren behind him, who was just elevated to second string and scored two touchdowns today. Chucky Snowden, a kid they like a lot. Not playing today because of an Achilles injury. Matt Bell, talented. James Hill, Kendall Bussey, David Arterbury. The list goes on and on. Darnell Brooks. There's a score from Oklahoma. The Sooners putting it to Utah State, 35 to 7 in the third quarter. Boy, Utah State, they go to Lincoln and they go to Norman. Lots of money, but lot, not much fun. Second and eight. A nice pickup by Arterbury there. Inside the 35 to the 32. Here's how strong David Arterbury is. Watch the left arm, stiff arm of Jeff Rosga as he tries to put the tackle on right here. Bang, get away. Arterbury just shoves Rosga aside. Picks up more yardage. Another first down. Well, they could go over the 400 yard mark rushing. 3-10 to go. That was Dennis Collier, a sophomore out of San Bernardino. We are scrambling to the flip cart right here. <laughs> We're down to the fourth and fifth string here for CU now. There's a score out of Notre Dame. 
George the Perlis. Irish. George Perlis' crew off to a tough start. They lose to Central Michigan last week in East Lansing and then go to South Bend and get blown out. Dennis Collier, five foot nine, 195 pounds out of San Bernardino. That's Arterbury. And it looks like another gopher is hurt. It's number 56, Robert South. Yes, Robert South. Got his right arm, I think, caught in the pile. Couldn't get it out. Well, you have to feel for the Gophers. They're not just getting whomped. They're getting hurt also. 58 to nothing. See you. We'll be right back. Think of how Minnesota feels. Another pass complete. Lewis Garrison across midfield. Another first down for the Gophers. 18 seconds left. I'll remember tomorrow the Broncos playing San Diego at home. A two o'clock start at Mile High Stadium and we'll have it for you right here on Channel 4. What do you think about that one? I'm a little afraid of San Diego because they've started out 0-3 and I think they're better than that. They've got one of the better defenses around. They've got a heck of a running game. They're averaging more than five yards on the ground to carry. But they haven't been able to win a game. 0-3 the year so far. And frankly, you never know what Bronco team is going to come out on the field week in and week out. You know they're going to be solid defensively. You just don't know what they're going to do offensively. Pass complete. Inside the 15-yard line, Minnesota calls a quick timeout. A nice pass by Shafter. The man who caught the ball, Steve Cambrice, is down on the ground hurt. Cambrice, as we said, has good hands. Shafter lays this thing up and once he catches it, he takes quite a hit from Spencer Coulter, the senior strong safety. Time has been stopped. Cam Brees is still down. Minnesota's going to get one more play. Five seconds to go here. Now they finally take a timeout, I think. Yes, Minnesota now has called a timeout. They've got two left. <laughs> As if it matters. Five seconds to go. They're down by 58 points. You would think John Good because you want to get out of here as soon as possible. Oh, you want to score. No chance to score. Give these kids something to be a little happy about. The last shutout you see back in 1987 against the Kansas State Wildcats. the Broncos a minute ago. New Score is proud to join with the Broncos in sponsoring the 1991 SACM project, which raises funds for essential services in the Provident health care system. This year's donations will be dedicated exclusively to Flight for Life. It's the service you hope you never need to use, but are sure glad it's there. Call 629-4446 to get involved, and let's sack them for Flight for Life. Well, Minnesota can probably get one playoff here before the final gun goes off, and they'll be looking into the end zone. Over the middle. Incomplete. No flag. Bullshit! And that is the end of the ball game. Coach McCartney walking off the field with his strength and conditioning coach, Jeff Madden. The two coaches shake hands at midfield. Mac probably saying, John, I wanted to beat you, but not this badly. So the Buffs take a two.